proportion person is who we're going to draw next. So it's not going to be you. This part you don't need the mirror for because I'm just going to show you the rules of the proportions and where things should go on the human face. I could turn this into male, female by changing a couple little things, um, adding different hair or clothes or bone structures, things like that. But So proportion person, we're going to flip this over. I'm just going to use the back side. I don't know how many pages you guys have left in your sketchbook, but um, if you have plenty of pages and you want to use a new page, that's fine. Um, but if you're running short on pages, make sure you save a good page for your final piece. Okay, so the only parts we're going to do today is we're going to just we're going to get up to the point where we decide where the eyes go because that's important. So the first thing we're going to do for proportion man is we're going to draw the shape of the head. So the top of the head, and I'm going to fill most of this page. is round. Maybe a little squared off, but it's usually a little bit wider. And then the sides of the face, believe it or not, people just draw heads as circles, but the sides of the face are flatter. So I'm going to straighten my line as I get to the side of the face. And then when I get to the jawline, and everybody's jawline is slightly different, but it narrows. It's almost like a an egg egg head. So round up here, straight on the sides to a jawline. Again, not really at this point drawing yourself. If you would like to look in the mirror, I think get those jawlines lined up very well. If you would like to look in the mirror and try to draw your own jawline, usually like from the from the jawline up, it's pretty similar. Sometimes this part becomes a little more square on people, but that jawline is very distinct for people. Some people have more square um, shaped jaws. Some people have rounder jaws. So if I was going to look at something. I would probably do a generic, more generic top of the head, especially if you if you have like a buzz cut, like super short hair, then the top of the head is going to matter more. But if you have hair on top of your head, like it covers your skull anyway. So I don't worry as much about this, but I do pay attention to this a little bit more. Okay, let me erase this line. All right, so the next part I'm going to do, and this is really important, if you get this step wrong, then everything you do after this is going to be wrong. So you have got to take the time to make sure you get this step correct, because you can draw the most beautiful eyes, the most beautiful nose, the most beautiful mouth, but if they're all like in your forehead, it doesn't look so good, right? So we've got to get the things in the right spot. So if you're drawing right now, put your pencil down and watch. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to find the halfway point between the top of the head and the chin. And there's a trick to finding it that does not involve a ruler. And here's what I do. I guess. And I say, you know what? That looks like if I was going to guess halfway between here and here, that's where I would guess that it would be. So in order to check to see if I'm correct, what I will do is I will set my pencil down on the paper so that the tip of my pencil is on the line and then I will place my finger and slide it until it hits the line of the chin. So I know that from the tip of the pencil to where my finger is is one unit of measure. Now the tricky part here is I can't move my finger. I have to keep it where it is but then I just slide this up till my finger hits the center line and the tip of my pencil should hit the top of my head. So I came pretty darn close. I might be just a little bit off. Teeny, teensy, tiny bit off. So I might try again, move it down just a smidge. Tip of the pencil on the line. Fingertip on the chin. Move them up together until my finger hits that line. 
And there we go. That is perfectly halfway. That feels pretty good. So once I know that I got the mark in the right spot, I'm going to add the full line, just like that. So you have, you may have to play with that for a little bit to get it right, but you got to make sure that you get that line in the right spot. Then I'm going to do the same thing because I want this to be symmetrical and I'm going to find where the center part in terms of width should go. So same thing, tip on that line, fingers on the side of the head, scooch it over, and hey, I was a really good guesser today. Look at that. That's pretty good. So I'm going to leave that, and then I'm going to draw a light, light line so that I know that that's the middle part of the head. Okay, so I am going to, what time is it? Yeah, let's drop some eyes on there real quick, and then that'll be that. I'm, I'm going to do this for the video, um, and then I'm going to have you do this on your own. I'm just going to add the eyes, so because we could get that far today. So when we're looking at the center point, and we're deciding where the eyes should go, there are five eyes across the head. Now, clearly, you only have two eyes, so you're only going to be using two to actually add the shading to, but your five eyes across, you need to start um, with an eye in the middle. So now that I know where the middle is, I'm going to add an eye. Now I want you to notice when I add this eye that I'm not making it huge and I'm not making it dark. It's quite skinny and fairly small. Now I have to be able to fit five across perfectly, so I'm going to use the same trick. I'll make mine a little darker so you guys can see it. I might be wrong though, so I might have to erase it. That's why I told you to um, make it light. I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to put the tip of the pencil on one corner of the eye. I'm going to slide my finger to the other corner of the eye. And if I made that eye the right size, I should be able to count over two times. So I'll move my finger to where the tip of the pencil just was. That's one. That's where my one eye should go. And then I'll do it again. And look, I shot over little bit. Not much. That's actually pretty decent. Actually, that's pretty good. But let's say it wasn't good. Then I would go back to this eye and I would erase it and I would maybe make it just a smidge smaller and then I would do it again. But if I know that I got that in the right spot, then I'm going to add my other two eyes so that I have five eyes across three on that side, one, two, and I can just kind of fill in that space for my five eyes across, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually start drawing in parts of the eyes. We're not going to, again, make this look too much exactly like this. And if you want to add notes along the side, you can, but you don't have to. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start with the irises. So on the actual eyes, which is not the one in the middle, but the two next to it, we are going to draw, not yours necessarily, you don't need the mirror for this, we're just drawing generic proportions. When you start to draw yourself, this is the thing. I'm telling you the, there's rules, right? There's rules to everything. There's always rules. There's rules like how fast you drive. There's rules about what you got to do every day. Everybody's got rules. Well, you, as you guys are figuring out, some rules are meant to be broken. So I'm going to show you the rules, but then you have to remember that your face is not going to follow the rules. Otherwise, everybody would look identical. So everybody's is going to be a little bit different. So right now we're creating the rules, then you're going to use the rules and fudge them a little bit so that you get something that looks like you. I'm going to add this crease. And then the rule, again, we already talked about this rule that the pupil, you should be able to fit three across. So those things matter because they're going to show us where to line up the nose and the mouth. So we have to make sure that we get the five eyes the right length, that we get the pupils the right size, because it will directly impact how large we make the mouth and the other parts. Okay. 
Okay, after we get that, I like to make like a little bit of like an eye socket. And what that kind of does is it sets up the bridge of the nose and where the eyebrow is going to go. I'm not going to do the eye socket all the way across, but I kind of make this arch here. And again, different on everybody how much skin. And then I just kind of draw a generic eyebrow right on that brow bone. So first I was looking at bone structure and then I placed an eyebrow on top. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure again. So I'm going to do a halfway. And this is the one, I don't know why when I do this, I usually get this one almost almost like 100% of the time I guess right on this one, but this one I mess up all the time. So I usually end up having to like fix it a little bit. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the halfway mark between here and here. So again, I'm gonna do the same trick. I'm gonna put the tip of my pencil on that line. I'm gonna put my finger on the line of the chin and I'm gonna move it up. Let's see. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I actually did. That's like the first time ever. I usually end up having to fudge with that line a little bit, but I did pretty well. When I do this, and then I move it up, I can see that it's actually pretty accurate. So I'm going to leave that there, and I'm going to extend it across. All right, now, in the chat, tell me, what do you guys think goes on that line? What's going to go there? The nose, somebody says. Okay, what else? You guys think nose? Mouth, mouth. Lots of mouth, okay. All right, you guys are right. Most people, I'm surprised, most people do say the nose, but it's actually the top of the mouth. So what's going to go there? If you put the base of the nose there, your nose gets too long, but most people do put the nose there. So that I think it gets like a really like long drawn out feel to it. So I'm not going to draw the entire lips. I'm just going to draw this part to show that that's where the top of the lips go. So every time we're figuring out proportions, because proportion means that there's a size relationship. You can draw the face itty bitty, and you can draw the face really big. But if you draw the face really big, then you better draw big eyes, big nose, big mouth. And if you draw the face really small, you gotta draw small features. So to make everything work together for the size that it is, there's always gonna be a height of where we put something. So we just figure out like where the height of the mouth is, and now we need to figure out the width. So the width, and this is another one people don't believe me, is going to come from the pupil down. People usually say, oh my gosh, Miss Felix, that is, there's no way. They, and one of the most common things people do is they draw, and we haven't drawn the nose yet, but people try to draw the nose and the mouth the same width, and they are not. The nose is narrow, more narrow than the mouth. So if you don't believe me and you don't trust that that's true, what you can do, try to do it without poking your eye out, is you can take your pencil and you can line it up next to the corner of your mouth and you can see in the mirror, when you look straight in a mirror, where that pencil hits in the middle of your eye and then and that's proof, like yep, that's actually how wide the mouth is. So from that line, now I know the height of the mouth and now I know the width of the mouth so I can add this in. and remember this is just proportion person so it's not me it's not anybody the next thing is the nose so we have to find the height of the nose and the width of the nose and the first thing we're gonna do to find the height is I just try to repeat one of these eyeballs right above because a lot of times people put the nose too close to the mouth So that just gives me, reminds me that there's a space. And then I can draw the base of the nose. Now, 
Speaking of rules that are meant to be broken, this is the number one rule. Like, this is a rule I don't like because it gets broken more times than not. And that is the width of the nose. What the proportions state is that the width of the nose should be from the inside corners of the eyes, straight down. I usually find the nose is slightly wider than that. So what I like to do is I will draw those lines straight down. But then I'll let it kind of pop a little bit outside of those lines. It's not going to be as wide as the mouth but it's usually wider than those lines, just a little bit. Okay, so now we have the eyes, the nose, the mouth, we have the height and the width of all of them. The next thing we gotta do is the ear. Ears are usually a problem. People tend to make them too small, but they are actually, and you can do this too if you pull your hair back and you look in the mirror, you can actually see that the top of the ear hits the eyebrow and the base of the ear hits the nose. Now, here's the thing. The reason people, I think, draw their ears too small is because the place where it attaches to your head is smaller, but they forget that it attaches to your head and then you have an ear lobe, or that it attaches to your head and then you have like this top cartilage right here, right? So I draw a line from my eyebrow and the base of the nose. And then obviously if you do something like this, you're going to look like a monkey, right? That's not what the ear is going to do when you're looking straight on. What happens is, is the connective tissue is here and then it goes up. Then it comes down, and because we're looking at you straight on, it's not going to stick out like that. It's going to come up, it's going to come down, and it's going to do the same thing on the bottom. So it attaches there, comes down, hits that line, and goes back up. Now that's all you really need to do for now. If you are drawing your portrait and you have long hair and it covers your ears, you luck out. You don't have to draw the ears. But if you have short hair and you can see your ears, then that's the rule of proportion. But then you're going to have to start looking for the other things that happen and how that skin inside gets shaded and all these types of things. But again, if you can't see your ear, you don't have to draw them. Okay, so after you got the ear, the next thing is the hairline. Now, there are, we're going to do hair another day. We're not going to talk about actual hair, and I don't want you guys to draw your own hair yet. It's hard because you're looking at a picture of yourself as like Mr. Clean, Mr. Big, you know, bald-headed person, which if you don't have much hair, it's not that big of a thing, but if you're like me and you have some hair, it's like longer hair, it looks weird to see yourself as a bald person. But you got to leave it for a couple of days because I'm going to go over hair another time. But what you can do is you can draw your hair line. So it doesn't matter if you're male, female, curly hair, blonde hair, straight hair. The hair line is just a line. And there's some tips and tricks to it. So the main thing for this guy, who is not you, to know is that if you just draw the hair on the head like this, which I see a lot of people do, it looks like your mama put a bowl on your head and then cut around it. It looks weird. It's just too straight. You have to have some sideburns, even if you're female, right, and you pull your hair back. You're going to have some hair in front of your ears. It doesn't mean you need to have big like pork chop side ch sideburns here, but you do need to have some hair that comes in front of the ear. And then it usually comes up here, and then sometimes at the temple it gets a little thicker. And then oftentimes in this corner you get a little bit of, like a, like it pulls back a little bit, and then as you get older and if people start losing their hair, they call that a receding hairline, because this recedes, this starts going back. It's not going to be that far recessed now, because you guys aren't old enough to have that problem yet.
So you finish it off like that. And then here's another thing. One thing I like to do is instead of just adding um, the hair to here, is I kind of add an extra line because this is your scalp, this is your skin, but your, your hair sticks out a little bit further. So I usually add this extra line here to indicate where that hair is going to kind of go. And it fills out the head. So I can do that on the other side too. Put the ear here. Hairline. And then kind of just add the hair on top, this line being the scalp. Okay, last but not least, we got to add on the neck and the shoulders. So, for neck and shoulders, a couple things with the neck to watch out for. You just got to get it, there's, I don't have a real rule for how thick it's going to be, but what you have to think about is that it's more like a tree growing out of the ground versus a pole. I see students make their neck too skinny. I call this head on a pole. You look like a bobblehead if you get the neck too skinny. So that's kind of crazy. We don't want that. And then I see other people who get the neck too thick. And then they just go straight down like this. Now this guy looks like a WWF wrestler or something strange. I don't think anybody's neck in this class is going to be that thick. So the happy medium is that the line doesn't go straight down, it curves. It is going to grow from behind the ears. So it does come from back here, but it's going to curve inward instead of going straight down. Like that. Now, here's the next thing I see people kind of do with the neck very, very commonly, and some of you might have already done it if you're following along, which is I see them take that line and they go straight into the shoulder and they add it like that. And that looks also weird. You look like E.T. if you guys even know what that movie is, right? Where there's like neck sticks up, it's too long. So what you guys can, you can't see like on the camera here, but what you can see if you look in the mirror is that, and especially if you guys are into like working out and you know like your muscle groups, right? This is how the anatomy comes into play. But there's a muscle up here in your shoulders, which are your trapezius muscles, right? They call them your traps. So those are actually going to grow up at the level of your chin. So at my chin level, I'm going to have this trapezius come out. And then it, what it, what I like to think of it, I like to think of it like a triangle because the trapezius comes out and then it hits your shoulder bone and then your collarbone comes back in and it forms a sort of triangle. So let me erase ET neck here. There's the traps. Then the shoulder, then the, there's like a triangular thing that happens. This is like where the collarbones would be. And that's a way more natural neck. Now this line that people draw usually just kind of fades away into shadow, something soft like that. So that's a more realistic neck without it looking too long. And then the last thing is to put just like whatever, you know, if you're wearing a hoodie or a shirt, I'm just going to do sort of a generic t-shirt. But the trick is, is you want to make it look like it's wrapping around the neck and not just stuck on the person. So if you only draw one line to be the neck, it ends up looking kind of flat. So you don't want to just draw that line. What you want to do is you want to take that line and you want to continue it so it goes behind the neck and then add a little bit of something more irregular to be the shirt. And I'll leave it off on this side so that it looks more natural. And then you know you can add your shading to it so it believably looks like a shirt sitting on and you get this sort of gap here.